beautiful muses. Welcome to Cosmo Muse Tarot. Today we are going to look at the new Chinese Lunar New Year. There's always a new animal with the Chinese year. And we are coming out of, in 2023, starting on February 4th, we went into the black rabbit year so it was a or black water rabbit year so it was a water year and a rabbit year so it was yin water and rabbit and that concoction was very sort of subtle it had a magic to it but more of this subtle ethereal kind of um a little bit more of a private magic uh, this year we change elements, so we start into the wood element and we move from the more timid but fertile rabbit into the really assertive, magical dragon. So my impression and my, my experience of the animals, even when I like look for people who are born under an animal sign or something like, both rabbit and dragon have a magic to them but yeah it's like it's a little bit more of a spiritual magic with rabbit and artistic magic and dragon is more of that like power in the world assertive they're like the ceos they're the um real movers and shakers in the world they can really make things happen push things forward so this year we may feel a lot of of um like external, visible type of magic or in the world and coming from us. It's just a very um, get it done kind of energy. And the wood versus water. Water is a very spiritual, it's, a very, it's about perseverance and trust and um, patience and finding that flow that kind of over time creates shape through erosion it's, a, it's much more of this like long haul incubating energy at least in the chinese zodiac whereas wood really puts us into the spring energy it is about growth and because dragon is a yang or yang animal it's yang wood which is the wood of a tree so yin wood which we'll have next year with the snake is more about like the grasses and the clovers and like small like plant kind of wood the yang wood is about a tree kind of wood so it's much more like big growth long growth um sustained sustained growth and the um the dragon itself is an earth creature um, in terms of its element in the zodiac and it's because it's yang again it's a yang earth which is the mountain and in um, you know a lot of people in the Chinese astrology community will call it a dam energy because mountains are able to naturally create and hold waters that are running off so little like mountain lakes and streams and whatnot it can really dam up that energy and use it for some energy so it has a little bit of water in with it so the young wood with the dragon is sort of like the mountain forest you know like these big growth trees in the mountains really tapping into deep springs and runoff and you know like it's just a very fresh enlivening kind of inspiring reaching energy so i think it's going to be a little bit more of an aggressive year coming in but like in a in a, a good way for the majority of us um, so I have four piles for you guys to choose from to get a little bit of a look into your year with the dragon yang wood energy, which is just is called the wood or the green wood dragon. Um, we are going to look at what inside of you is that going to conjure? What kind of new impulses will you feel by being in this dragon year? And then we'll also look at external events and circumstances that the energy will kind of stir up in your life as well. So a little bit of an inner and an outer look at what's going on with this. 
if you are interested, I did do a rabbit year reading. I will put a link to it in my description so you can go back if you would like to kind of review and see how um, a pile you would tap into now would um, really reflect how you felt the year went for you. Um, just for fun if you would like to because I'm going to do the same format that I did last year for this year. Um, at the end of this reading, something I didn't do last year and like after I got done and I posted the reading, I was like, I should have at the very end done like these little short micro readings for each Chinese animal. So we are all born under a Chinese animal. So when you get through with the pile you choose, go to the very ending chapter and you could find that in the timestamps in the descriptions or, you know, there's kind of normal breaks in the, the timer. So you could also just scroll to the very last kind of time break. I'm going to do these like really quick micro a card or two that are simple for each Chinese animal so you can get another overlay another little lens that you would put on top of the reading you chose the pile you chose based on your Chinese animal um, technically we have a year animal a month animal a day animal and an hour animal if you know all of those, you could tune into all of them. I tend to just find the year and the day the most important ones to look at. Um, if you don't know all of those, which most people do not, just choose your year animal, that's fine. Um, and you, you know, you can get, if you don't know, most people know what their Chinese animal is, but if you don't know, just Google it. It's pretty easy to, to find. There's lots of different resources to figure that out. Um, if you want to find all four of yours, I love um, ChineseFortunecalendar.com is a great one and um, they have a lot of things so it can, I, it can be, I'll try and put a link in my description to where you can go to find your all four of your animals um, so you don't have to weed through the whole site to figure that out. So yeah, look for that in the descriptions if you're curious about all your animals. Okay, let's get to it. We've got four piles. Pile one, we have Lemurian Quartz. Pile two is a moonstone point. Pile three, we've got orange chalcedony. And pile four is a cherry blossom quartz. Okay, if you need some time with these to fill into which pile is calling your name, um, feel free to pause here. When you are ready, we will jump into pile one first, and you can jump to whichever pile you choose through the timestamps in the descriptions, and I will see you in your readings. Hello, pile one. Welcome to your Greenwood Dragon ear reading. You guys picked the Lemurian Quartz, which I will just, I don't know where the best place. I'll put it right here for now, but we may have to move it a little bit. Okay, so to start your reading, we are going to get a little bit of an insight into how this year will feel inside of you, kind of inner world things that this dragon wood year kind of um, ignites within you, what kind of impulses will it sort of churn up in you, how, it's, how the year will feel inside of you. Okay, so we are going to get a sigil oracle to get kind of a baseline about that. Solar, beautiful. So very energized energy here. Okay, we'll see if the cards will fit that way. Um, yeah, so feeling vital, feeling um, moments of enlightenment within you, moments of clarity and alignment within you. Um, but yeah, real powerful energy. It doesn't surprise me seeing this with, with the dragon year. I would expect at least one pile to kind of feel like this. So you guys definitely 
tap to pile that very much so has that feel of the dragon just really really feeling bright really feeling vital really feeling aligned within and eager to then shine put your best foot forward take action step into the spotlight um, share things share your heart share your wisdom all of the good things so really beautiful internal feeling coming here with the dragon okay let's get a few tarot cards and i'm definitely using a deck where i may have to quickly cover up some things as some cards come out so I will try to catch those a little bit quickly um, if need be with YouTube regulations. Seven of Cups. I think we're okay on that one. <laughs> Three of Cups and Queen of Pentacles. Um, I think we can do one more. We might need to shift a few things though. Let's see. Well, that's where I think I can scooch this way and put our stone somewhere else. Okay, first pile always figuring out the uh, lay of the land. <laughs> okay, um, we'll just put your stone to the side. Okay, um, this way we should be able to fit one more. Okay, so, so far seven of cups, three of cups, queen of pentacles, as well as that solar energy, and then four of cups, okay. interesting so a lot of cups energy going on here um oh only really one thing i see okay <laughs> um yeah just uh definitely what i'm feeling though even though there's you know seven of cups can be this feeling of like having too many things uh, that you're trying to be involved in or that are on your plate um, or like too many things that your heart is entangled in or craving or longing for and so this this call to you to to streamline to not spread yourself so thin to take a few options out of your sphere uh, you know like and really calling on your heart to make some of those decisions about what needs to be cut because there's too much going on there's too many options and it can be it may for some of you be about things already on your plate but for some of you it may just be like there's a lot of options going on which to me feels a little bit more aligned with this solar energy you may just be shining so bright that like a lot of doors are opening which this feels right because this particular seven of cups has doors so i'm gonna go with this that like you're shining bright you're feeling vital you're feeling assertive and engaged which naturally draws things to you as well as gives you energy to go out and push certain things open um, so a lot of options are before you and you can't do it all and you need to make some decisions here um, and I feel like this is where we're picking up on the Four of Cups over here. You may feel overwhelmed sometimes. So even though you're shining bright, a lot of things are opening to you. That internal feeling, how that's going to feel to you is sort of like needing to go down into your cave to get aligned with what's right for you. And that's exactly what you should do. Um, because you can't do all seven of these options <laughs> uh, there's like yeah like less than half of the options coming to you or what you should engage and actually go towards um, sometimes 
depending on the energy happening, it's okay to spread yourself thin because you're needing to experiment and try things on and see how things fit, but that's not the energy here. You're in a matured energy. It's not a time to experiment, but you're still gonna have these options and you're need, you'll, you'll need to say no to some things. You'll need to not open some doors, not um, say yes to certain opportunities but you need to go within yourself to feel into what is right for you. So a little bit of contemplation, a little bit of like getting in touch with your heart through a lot of stillness and quietness. Um, you'll hear what your heart wants. It will like the sensation you'll feel when you know an opportunity or an option or a pathway is correct for you is you'll feel just very calm and right. It won't have this anticipatory, excited, eager energy. It will just like waiting until you're in a very calm, neutral, emotional space and things feeling right and settled and correct those are the things you say yes to. Those are the anything else, even if it feels exciting, um, if you can't get into a space where it feels calm and right, there's too many emotions layered on top of it and you're not seeing it correctly. And if you can't see it correctly, it's probably not right for you. Um, so do put a lot of effort into some calm, still quiet space so you can get into a more neutral attitude and a more contemplative state to feel that, you know, those real gut instincts rather than anxiety instincts. So there's a lot of times people will confuse intuition and anxiety. Um, sometimes those excitement things you feel excited about and lit up about, they're overlaid with a lot of emotional charges and you have to wait till you're neutral to really feel the the right and calm and yeah um i think so that's something that internally i think you will be working on with this dragon energy um internally also you're going to be feeling really clear about your value and i think that's something to keep in mind when you're contemplating options is like what really aligns with the way you know you value yourself, the way you know you're coming into your strength. And this does solidify that like, um, this isn't a year to experiment with things. This is a year to commit to things that you already have real deep command of and a real um, mature quality that knows how to nourish certain things because you've already been through the process, you've already nourished certain things and seen them grow. It's like committing thing to things that, that tap into an ability to do that in a way you've already done it, in a way you already know you can, have confidence in, um, really feel your worth in, really feel something that's developed in you. Um, and then I'm also seeing that you're going to be craving community, like heart community, not just like, um, you know, social life in general and parties and being out there and mixing and mingling. It's more like real heart community, like really being with your heart people, whether that's family, chosen family, or just like a really strong, safe beautiful community. It's like your soul tribe is going to feel important to you. If you don't feel like you already know who those people are, you may go on a journey this year to really seek these people out and um, really putting some of that solar active assertive energy into feeling a sense of community in your life. I think that's something you're going to be craving and longing for. If you already have that, you're just going to be deepening into it, you know, like really focusing on that. So that's also something that can give you um, um, some, some insight into right doors, right options, and ones that just aren't the right time. Um, you know, some of them may really connect to, to beautiful community. Um, 
so yeah, options and doors that connect to beautiful community and options that connect to thing you're, things that you're already really understand your value in. These are the, the options to say yes to. Okay, um, to end this kind of internal sense of the dragon year for you, I'm gonna pick a card from the wise animal body. Um, just connecting to your body this year, what it has to communicate. And all of these decks I've used so far are actually from Serpent Fire. Um, I, I don't use her decks often because of some of the YouTube things, but for whatever reason, this, this reading each year seems to be one that calls out her cards for me. Okay, so you have C. Um, let's just put that in the center here. So really tapping into um, third eye is what this feels like to me. Um, so tapping into inner knowing, which does connect to that four of cups to me, like going into contemplation to really connect into your intuition and your inner knowing. But C also to me feels like observing. So like when these options come up to help you get into a place where you're getting right communication and sensing communication from your body, you may need to kind of like take a step back to observe opportunities, options, doors being presented to you to, to like get a big picture of them, really observe them. Um, a little bit from afar just to get a, a, a better sense of that option. Something about that will help you to see things in a more big picture and something about that will help you to connect to your own inner knowings for yourself. Yeah, so really, yeah, beautiful. Okay, we are going to move into the external world, kind of things that this dragon year may turn up in your environment. Um, energies coming in towards you oops and we've got adventures it's the one that kind of flipped over in my hand and underneath it was community so that matches what i've felt with your three of cups so community is coming towards you and you are longing for and going towards community so that's that's a big one this year for you guys but adventures um this could be different things to everybody for some of you, these new, you know, a couple new doors that you and opportunities that you say yes to could be new adventures to you, like um, a career that makes you move, um, you know, going to a new university that's out of state or even just in state. That's an adventure in itself. For some of you, it could be foreign travel. For some of you, it could just be like life feels very vibrant like you know just channeling that that jungle energy like just things are happening they're vibrant they're mysterious they're exciting um it could just like have that general sense but for some of you there's there's like foreign travel and for some of you some of the opportunities you step into are kind of like a new journey that they're pulling you into a new adventure that um is just yeah, awakening life in a totally different way. Okay, let's get an animal card to go with this as well. And bat, listen up. You are working through deep soul patterns. Release any outdated beliefs that surface. Ooh, interesting. So whatever these adventures are that are coming toward you, they are going to kind of push on, on some soul patterns you're needing to see. And it feels like shadow work to me where you're needing to, like certain things you come into are really going to help you to see behaviors or patterns that you have that you're not always conscious of. So like being, so, and, and that does make sense. So often when we are in a new environment, 
new sides of ourselves are needing to be accessed. Um, and we just start to have things mirrored to us in different ways. And so you may start to see aspects of yourself that you weren't totally aware of before. And that helps you to see certain patterns like deep soul patterns that have always sort of been there, but you've just never had the right kind of like light on, you know, these things. So they've lived in the shadow. So it's not saying when I talk about shadow work, the way I'm framing it doesn't mean that like you're seeing things about yourself that are shadowy. They can become shadowy when they're functioning in the unconscious, but you're seeing side of yourself so you, you are like unaware of. Um, and so then you can see the way that side of you behaves. Um, whereas before, because of the angle of light in your environment, you couldn't really see those patterns of behavior. And so when you can't see them, they do tend to get a little, run amok a little bit. Um, but you're seeing aspects of yourself that have been in shadow that you just couldn't see because you weren't in the right environment or the right light. And so now you, with that view and that feedback, you can sort of be like, oh, wow, okay, well, let's get this aspect of me um, integrated and in control. Like maybe there are a few little things it was doing that weren't great because I wasn't aware of it, but there's also some really beautiful things about it. And now that I see it and I can integrate it, I can get a hold of those areas where they were running amok, you know, <laughs> and um, really create some beautiful rhythms and, and behaviors through this side of myself I'm newly seeing. That's what it feels like to me. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, pretty cool, actually. Okay, let's get some tarot cards for you guys with this. Ace of Wands. So new beginnings coming towards you because this lower roll is, is things in your environment, like events, circumstances, things out of your control that this dragon energy is kind of stirring up into your life. So something new um, and exciting is coming towards you. And just gonna put that there. <laughs> um, so it could be new creative projects, it could be a new job, it could be a new, um, romantic interest it could be new just a new um i was gonna say sense of creativity but this is stuff coming towards you not from the inside but something may like new new environment could because you're seeing new sides of yourself stir up new kind of ways of seeing how you're creative that feel exciting um but I do feel this is more like an event, like a new job coming towards you, a new person coming towards you, a new creative project coming towards you, something like that definitely feels a little more prevalent, but whatever resonates to you. Okay, let's get a few more. Ooh, this bottom card wants to come out. We've got Hanged Being. Let's get two more before I... Eight of Swords, okay. Yeah, there's whatever is kind of coming towards you is going to show you sides of yourself that I think you've been quite unaware of and the lovers, okay. Um. So with Hanged Bean and the Eight of Swords, how I would, you know, if these were just two cards that came out on their own, there were no other cards around them, I would say that this is sort of like you feeling very trapped and um, struggling to understand a way out of some kind of situation or scenario, feeling kind of confined in life and your mindset suffering because of that just just that that mental anguish that comes when you feel kind of caged and the hanged bean indicating that there is a way out but it's through your heart and so you need to kind of um, turn your mind upside down so that you can kind of leave it and really 
uh, drop into heart a little better to see the way out. But what I'm seeing because of the other cards that have come out is that like this is what you are breaking out of this year. This is maybe how you're coming into the year feeling, but the adventure, the new side of yourself you're seeing, new opportunities, you know, that that you're feeling longing for or drawn to and that do, you know, something that actually does come towards you, these are jailbreaking you. Um, but there is this indication that you still need to really be navigating through your heart this year. Um, there could be some some mental trappings if you try to sort of like navigate with your mind. You could get yourself into scenarios where you feel a little bit caged again. But if you continue to really guide yourself through your heart, which we've talked about a lot up here about internally really connecting to intuition, gut, but heart as well coming through here. Uh, you'll you'll really find ways to bend and um, and transcend like magically teleport out of like situations or something just like our heart can be like a portal is what I'm trying to say here and so when we come through our heart sometimes when we feel like we are trapped in a certain circumstance or environment, when we drop into our heart, our heart can give us that portal out of it. And so things that appear to you when you come th through your heart may seem miraculous or seem like out of nowhere, but it's your heart really acting as a portal. And so anytime you feel stuck by certain uh, events, environments, mindsets this year, get into your heart and we'll give you that portal out um, because you're meant to be exploring, you're meant to be, um, yeah, engaged in, in adventures. But you know, when you see like movies, like adventure movies, there's always at least one point, if not multiple points, where the people on the journey end up in some sort of like, um, you know, being captured somewhere or held somewhere and they have to find their way out. So I, I feel like that's just part of the journey coming this year is like you have to find the way out because this adventure is coming, you know, it comes with successes and challenges and excitement and, and um, villains and allies and all the, you know, all the things. Um, but there will be a moment that might be pivotal in this adventure where you are a little bit needing to figure out how to jailbreak something. But the dragon energy knows how to do that and your heart is a portal. So if you can get out of mind into heart, you can find that that do sex machina energy, which is like the, the miraculous turning point in a plot that... Um, that really shifts, you know, the hero or the ensemble or whatever's going on from from like uh, yeah, like a a pit of despair into exciting forward victories and moments. <laughs> and yeah, so I think initially coming into the year, you're being jailbreaked but going into more adventures that you are sort of pushed into by the dragon, you may find yourself sort of captured again and your heart is the key out, as well as just tapping that dragon, tapping, you know, the magic of the dragon. And then we've got lovers over here, which, you know, tapping into that Ace of Wands, for some of you, it could be a love interest. For others of you, it's finding your higher self, um, finding more harmony inside of yourself, which does make sense as, as like, you know, new environments and new light kind of brings out new sides of yourself. You may have moments where you're trying to figure out how to integrate that shadow. Oh, exactly. This is showing part of, you know, part of a person in shadow. And it's like, how do you integrate um, so if you put these two people together, their shadows kind of integrated into a whole being. 
oh, that's exactly what this is. Um, so yeah, definitely some shadow work, which, which just means seeing a side of yourself you've been unconscious of and getting a hold of it and understanding it and creating some, some good behaviors for that side of yourself. And, you know, so definitely some integration work and that could be part of where you kind of feel trapped is like how, how to integrate that shadow. Um, for some of you that will come through external events. A lot of times external events come into our lives to kind of push on internal things we're working on. So yeah, that's what I'm feeling there. Okay, let's pick a, um, a crystal card for some advice on this external atmosphere for you in the dragon year. This one's wanting to come out. See the magic. See the magic of the dragon energy that's just present in the year. See the magic in yourself. See the magic that the dragon is stirring up in you. And I think whatever aspect of yourself you've been unconscious of is actually quite magic. Um, and so doing the work to see that and to integrate it and bring it out of shadow just makes you more magical. I love that because it would be the dragon that would show us how much more magical we are. Okay, to end, I'm just gonna pull a few um, tea leaves, just some general, um, not general, more specific types of things coming into your year. Okay, let's pick like three of them. So we've got <laughs> the dragon. Beware of self-delusions. Definitely the dragon is helping you to do some, some shadow work to see a whole side of yourself that, that you've not seen that's been an illusion to you um, and integrating that more magical side of yourself. And then we've got Cain. Pay attention to your health. Okay, that's always a, always, good advice i think um but going into the year having that maybe it's you know kick off the dragon year with um more intention and eating healthy and exercising in a way that feels good to you and just like paying attention to well-being um, so that also health includes you know a balanced life understanding your stress processes, you know, all sorts of things as well-being in general, taking care of your mind, which I think a lot is there. So really being gentle with yourself as well as, as good health when there's some, some mental tensions. Um, and just know that this whole year is helping you to relieve those and to incorporate some shadow. Um, so being gentle about it because you have a whole year to, to get this and you will get it. Okay, and then last one, do doors, right? Opportunities are waiting for you. And notice it says opportunities, not opportunity. And not every, like we talked about up here, not every opportunity is a yes. You need to not overdo things. And to only say yes if you feel very calm and right about it. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave you guys. I hope this was insightful. I hope it's helped to prepare you for some of this dragon energy you're about to get into. Actually, I think once this reading comes out, um, because I wanted to do uh, a February and in bulk reading, which meant that this is coming out like the day after the um, we switched to the new Chinese animal which I think I forgot to say in the reading, um, the Lunar New Year always aligns with the second new moon after winter solstice, but the astro Chinese astrology uses the, a, a, a specific calendar that's not the lunar calendar, it's more of a solar calendar, and so that always 
almost always is on February 4th that we switch to the new animal. And I think this reading comes out February 5th. So um, yeah, we will, this will be like, this reading is like the energy is here already starting to roll into it. So anyway, I hope this resonated. If so, I always appreciate likes and shares and subscribes. Always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments. And definitely if you're interested in Western astrology, I do do a newsletter where I give month ahead insight. And then for paid readers, I sprinkle in throughout the month um, horoscopes for different transits as well. Um, but the, the free membership has, you know, plenty of beautiful astrological insight in that monthly newsletter. So uh, I will put a link to that also if you want to check that out in my descriptions. And if you are coming to this in February 2024, I'll also put a link to that, you know, the most recent newsletter so that you can you know, not miss out on that if you want to check that out because it will have already been sent out. Okay, this is where I'm going to leave you guys. Happy Dragon Year. Hello, Pile 2. Welcome to your Greenwood Dragon Year reading. You guys picked this Moonstone, which I'm just going to put over to the side here. And to start, we are going to look at how this dragon year is affecting you inwardly. What kind of new impulses is it going to bring up in you? How are you feeling in the dragon energy? So we're going to start with a sigil card um, from this, uh, or at least made by Serpent Fire. Um, using several of her decks in this reading. So that one's wanting to come out. Yoni. So very, getting into very receptive energy, very feminine energy. Um, so a year to really feel into your femininity, doesn't matter what gender you associate with. We all have kind of a yin side, a dark, intuitive, premonitory, cyclical, um, pleasure-oriented um, uh, energy that knows how to receive and how to feel pleasure and how to really cultivate an inner compass of values, really knowing what our inner values are, what our inner beauty is. So really cultivating, yeah, a rich, deep inner world of, of beauty, pleasure, receptivity. Like, love it. That's gorgeous. Um, it's interesting with the dragon and the wood, they're very kind of masculine energies. So it is, that is interesting that that, that makes you have more kind of feminine impulses. <laughs> Uh, maybe you're contrary people that like to kind of respond oppositely to things, um, which is a very needed energy in the world. It's kind of like that Hayoka energy and, you know, in the Native American archetypes, like um, always turning things on their head to show the absurdity of something. So you may be responding to very masculine energy by saying, um, yeah, I don't know. Just like, just flipping the masculine on its head a little bit. We'll see what comes up in you though. Will of Mars. Interesting. Okay. Well, okay. I'm getting an idea of, of why the Yoni may have come up actually. But let's get a few more cards out first. Oops. Um, I was only going to take four cards, but you guys have a fifth. Let's see if we can fit it. I don't know. When we do that lower roll, we may have to cover that up, but okay. Interesting. So What I'm seeing is that, you know, the dragon is something that can bring a destructive energy when it's a little bit out of hand. 
Um, but sometimes it's destroying things that are ready to be destroyed, that are are due to have, you know, like out with the old construct and needing to level something in order to like bring in the new. Um, so something coming into the year may have just happened like that. And so it's like you've already felt the presence of, um, oh, and I'm forgetting, I need to, this is a deck where I do need to cover some things, hopefully. Hopefully I'm okay there. Um, oh, this whole card has, uh, a lot going on. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I think we're good. Um, okay. Where was I? Yes. It's like stepping into the year, something may have like, um, already been tipped on its head. Something may have already kind of gone through a phase of, of destruction. And now it's time to sort of rebuild. But instead of being like impulsive about that and just like following any little impulse that comes through you, it's like you're, something's turning on in you where it's like, I need to feel this next cycle of growth that's coming in. I need to understand it through my body, not my mind. Um, and maybe it's because whatever you are, whatever's kind of gone to ground here coming into the year, it was like built upon a lot of intellect and action and assertion. Um, and you're like, I want to rebuild though in, in a more nourished way, in a way that like nourishes me. So it's still being like proactive in life, but it's just like being really connected into and assertive about a new way of building in your life that's, that's more nourishing to you, that has more balance integrated in it, where you can connect into an ability to receive and not always be the one, you know, making, you know, always being the one making things happen. Like sometimes things can happen for you. And I feel like you're trying to tap, like something about the dragon is trying to help you to tap into that magic within you of like how to actively be receptive, how to, how to build life anew in a way that feels more gentle, feels more um, rich and deep and pleasurable. So I think it's actually very, very beautiful, but it's like, take your time, you know, feel into this. Uh, don't just start building new aspects of your life because you feel an emptiness somewhere or that you need to fill a hole. It's like, but this is what you're, you know, I'm, I'm sensing this is what you're feeling. Like this is you talking to yourself. Like don't just build to build because, because it's what I should be doing or what people do when an aspect of life has kind of um, gone by the wayside. Like slow it down, really get in touch with yourself and really feel into your senses to know what feels good to you and build a little bit more through that embodied animalistic aspect. Um, something about that is very nourishing. You're feeling new impulses. You are feeling new creativity for sure. You're integrating. This card came up in the last reading and it feels the same here. You are this, but you have this, um, a little more dialed it's in a different place in your reading and so it feels like a little bit more like you're already aware of some aspect of yourself you're working to integrate some shadow side of your personality you have been unaware of unconscious of and it's like you're now conscious of it and you are intentionally internally there's not events coming at you to do this it's like you're you already have a grasp on this and a desire and longing to integrate parts of you you've sort of newly seen as some some aspect of life kind of went to ground 
Um, but you are going to start feeling the more you integrate, the more you work on integrating parts of yourself that you had previously been unaware of and seeing them and working on them to get, you know, these aspects of, of personality kind of um, behaving in conscious ways and in beautiful ways. The more you do that, the more you're going to really get in touch with your creative power. There are some attachments coming through, um, and I feel like that's kind of a, a tension between this deeper impulse to kind of um, anything new you're building in life, like wanting it to come from a more enriched, gentle, beautiful, receptive place, and this side of you that you're and that might be this thing that you're newly seeing about yourself, this side of you that does have attachments to um, being seen certain ways and having a certain status and fitting in certain places, whatever it is to you. It's like you've seen some side of yourself that, that had certain attachments to being seen in some way. And you're into that's sort of like what you're integrating. And the more you become aware of this, integrate it, um, become conscious of this, the more you're gonna find your own inner compass of creative impulse and power. And the work, and I think this is why this is a fifth card, because this feels like a result card. This feels like this doesn't come till the end of the year, but the, the more you work on this and the more you really dive into integrating aspects of self and building more slowly through an internal compass of personal values and personal pleasure versus um, being seen a certain way, yeah, the, the more you integrate that, sh that attachment shadow and the more you ignite personal power and creativity and the result by the end of this year, so next year at the end of January um, 2025, before snake year, you kind of come into a new archetype of the magician, of really understanding how to manifest so it may take this whole year to really feel into this, develop this, understand how to come from a more internal compass and a more receptive, gentle, animal compass. And by the end of the year, you really understand that side of you and how to manifest through that. So really cool. Okay, to end the top row, which is kind of the inner, the way the dragon year is kind of bringing up inner things. Um, ooh, we're gonna get a wise animal body card to show what your body wants to talk about in all of this. And you have ritualize, which is beautiful. I think that's beautiful advice for really developing your yin side, developing pers personal pleasure, receptivity, gentleness is to create rituals and practices that you can do every day that really get you in touch with that. Practice, practice, practice. That's what's coming through from your body. And that makes sense. Our bodies know things through practice, through ritual. And um, it, it wants to know this, but it says, in order for me to really know this, I have to feel it and I have to integrate it, and I have to experience it. So make rituals to help me do that. Okay, we are gonna move to this lower part of the frame where we're gonna look at what this wood dragon year is going to stir up into your environment. So circumstances, environments, external things that may come into your world due to this dragon energy. is not wanting to come out. 
Oh, here we go. Stillness. This is so interesting. Definitely a very contradictory energy to what, what I would imagine for a dragon year, but it's bringing, it may just be because of like um, how dragon interacts with your personal animals or something like interacting in a way that brings up more, yeah, internal things going on. But stillness, we've got a swan, we've got kind of a winter setting, and we've got northern lights. So it does feel very magical. So I feel like this is a response by your external world to things you're doing internally, like as you go a little bit more inward and checking in with yourself and your yin nature, your environment, the dragon environment is responding by giving you space to do this inner work, to see your inner magic, to see your inner beauty, moving from like some kind of feeling of ugly duckling to the swan transformation, but in like an incubated, beautiful, mystical space. So you're being given some space this year to really do some beautiful, potentially healing work. I always think of Northern Lights and winter both as kind of healing energy. So the environment is giving you space to do some healing um, and really do some inner development. So that's a nice response <laughs> by, by the dragon energy for you. It means it's very aware of you. It's very respectful of you, the dragon is. Um, Okay, so let's get a few, oops, wheel, interesting, and four of pentacles. Oh, it did all fit with that card, that's good. Okay, um, let's see, so we've got balance, moon, wheel, four of pentacles, Yeah, the moon with stillness, these match to me. It's like you're just being given space. Um, you're being given certain reflections by things that come into your life, whether it's by people, environment, events that take place. You're being given some reflections that help to clarify things that you've felt confused by especially inside of yourself. And it's um, really healing reflections, things that, yeah, have felt foggy, that have felt cloudy to you. Um, yeah. And it's helping to heal you in terms of the way you feel balanced. And that's going back to like integrating more yin energy into you and building life through a more yin lens. And this balance, the more and more you get into the year and really practice building through that yin, um, and this environment allowing you to do that, um, the more you're going to start feeling that balance come in and that's gonna feel very healing. And that, that balance energy that your environment is allowing you to tap into and, and pro giving you a platform to develop is going to be life-changing. It is going to like, it's so interesting because sometimes um, we think that like doing inner work and being more receptive versus um, assertive and active and proactive in life is like the things that that you know create change in our lives and get us to you know move ahead but for you the way you move ahead in life and the way you um come into change of scenario a change of life phase and cycle is by creating that balance and by developing that inside and this you're given space this year to do that the environment 
the way I'm reading it of what's coming to you is this environment is just trying to give you a platform to do your work and to find your balance. And as you do that, it will then, once it feels like you have balance, um, it will change your life. Um, you will be coming into a new phase of life. Something will change and it will probably be that thing that you've been trying to change through force and assertion and external efforting. And all of a sudden by like receding, receiving, being, yeah, just, just more, a little bit more internal, that exact change and progress in life you were looking for is, happens. You were doing it backwards, right? Um, yeah. And then four of pentacles here could just indicate, um, I didn't realize some of these cards, I'm doing really bad at covering up some of these cards. I'll just use my hands because I ran out of little papers. Um, the four of pentacles to me means it, it, it's a year where you are going to, to be very internal. So like not a lot of, um, It's like not a lot of um, external material activity is going to be happening, but it's like you should feel stable. You should feel fine and stable to take this space, to go into some healing, to go inside of yourself. It's just like not a year to, and I, your environments are not going to present you with things that like, make you fork out a lot of money or have to work harder to meet certain new bills that come up or to purchase that new house or go on that huge trip. It's like your external environment is supporting the healing work by not bringing a lot of things that make you move your material world. Um, yeah, so that's just kind of like a stability thing going on. I think I'm just going to find some like dice or something. I ran out of little stickies. Um, anyway, <laughs> you can see why I don't use this deck a lot. I love it, but YouTube is so weird. Anyway, anyway. Okay. So all this said, we are now going to choose a crystal card as some guidance for this kind of external realm. Um, what the world is bringing into your sphere this year. Garnet, ignite your passion. Definitely tapping that dragon energy, but it's sort of like igniting your passion is what happens as your um, result. This again, to me, this is like matching the magician over here. It's like, this is the result. And this is when the dragon energy really enters you. Um, but you have to be patient this year. You have some healing to do. You have some inner work to do. You have some practice and ritualizing to do to really establish and live in a different rhythm and in a more balanced um way that really incorporates and integrates your feminine side. And as you do that, you start more and more to realize that this is the thing that makes you feel alive, that makes you feel your passion, that makes you feel magic, capable of manifesting. So what's going on? The dragon ultimately is trying to connect you with its magic, with your magic but you have some work to do to get there. And that work is integrating the feminine. Um, and maybe you're someone that, you know, that feels like you already have that really integrated, but going back to the lovers, there's some shadow aspect of your personality or an aspect of your personality that's been in shadow that you're unconscious of that it's going to show you um, and I think, I think I already said this, like going into the year, I think you may just be seeing this all like by the time you see this reading, I feel like you will have 
you're about to see this or you've just seen this and you're like, oh yeah, I mean, aspects of me were really living the feminine and intellectually I understood the feminine and I thought I was integrated, but there's this, this aspect of my personality that I was very unaware of that was off balance because that aspect of my personality was supposed to be coming from a yin place, from inner values and not from attachments to be attachments to being seen in a certain way. Um, so there are aspects of you that may already be great and balanced in yin yang, but there's a new shadow aspect of yourself that you're just becoming aware of that needs to get into a yin mode. And this year is helping you to do that. And as you integrate it, you try, you find your real true beautiful balance and that ignites you to your light and passion in a magical way and in a manifesting way. Okay, so that's a uh, roundabout way. Okay, to end, we're just gonna do a few tea leaves, just a few kind of more poignant things about the year to look out for. Um, that dragon wants to bring to your attention. So we've got owl, good advice from a wise person. That's beautiful to see. So. You may have some yeah, wise people to be able to tap into to, that can give you some guidance or maybe they've been through this before or they get where you're coming from and have some beautiful insight for you. Guidance, insight, yeah. Get a couple more. Flag. Do not be tempted to lower your standards. And I think this is about going slow. This is about tapping into you instead of charging forward like you maybe would have normally in some aspect of your life that's gone to ground. It's like, no, go slow. Get in touch with this new thing you're integrating and finding balance in and as you know stick to the standards that are being felt as that integrates instead of just charging in and harp great happiness and i think that is your graduation in dragon year is like this really really beautiful healing journey this year of integrating some aspect of personality that's been in shadow and that's maybe been functioning in a more yang way that needs to be functioning in a yin way um, and as you do the work to integrate that and find balance and clear up some confusion like life changes you ignite you manifest and it's this feeling what you feel is great happiness and that look this harp feels like a dragon i mean it could be a fish too but it feels more like a dragon to me Great happiness, yeah. You're finding your magic. You're finding your own dragon quality. It just happens that to find that some aspect of you needs to be integrated and that aspect of you just happens to need to be more, at least more balanced in a feminine. Um, it doesn't have to be completely from the feminine, but it needs to have feminine integration in it. So yeah. All right, beautiful, wow. Very healing, growing, amazing year and the result is just, yeah, beautiful. All right, if this resonated, I always appreciate the things like share, subscribe, always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments. Also, I realized in pile one, so I'll say it for you guys too. I think I forgot to say the dates of when this takes place, when Dragon Year starts. Most people believe it begins on Lunar New Year, which is the second new moon after um, winter solstice, but Chinese astrology actually functions from a calendar that's a solar calendar, and almost every year it starts around on or really close to February 4th, and that is the case this year. So even though Lunar New Year is the ninth here, the 10th in China of February, the animal dragon starts takes place and comes into power on February 4th. And this reading will, I think, come out a day later. So dragon energy will already be here. Also, if you enjoy Western astrology, I do have um, 
a newsletter on Substack where I do, for free subscribers, I do kind of um, a monthly overview of the astrology. For paid subscribers, you also get sort of um, transit horoscopes as they unfold through the month, the big ones at least. Um, yeah, so check that out if you're interested. Uh, the, the free one has plenty of beautiful stuff to check out, so that's, you know, why not? <laughs> um, and then if you are interested in that and you do come to this at the start or even by mid-February, I will also put a link. So the main link will be to subscribe to that in general. But I'll also put a link to the February newsletter because that will have already come out when you see this. So I'll put a link to both of to just subscribe to my new, my Substack as well as a link to to the most recent one that I put out. So, all right. I hope you guys have a beautiful dragon year, and I am excited for you to really come into a new sense of of what feels like passion and power as you come out of this this dragon year all right see you guys hello pile three welcome to your greenwood dragon year reading i realized after i did the intro and once i got into pile one that i think i forgot i'm pretty sure i forgot in the intro to give you the date of when this dragon year begins um, so most people believe that the new animal starts with the Chinese Lunar New Year, which is always the second new moon after winter solstice. But the astrological, the Chinese astrological calendar is actually a solar calendar and the date of the new animal taking over is almost always February 4th, which is the case this year. So. To, this reading will come out, I believe, on February 5th, so we will already have just started the Dragon Year when you get this. Okay, let's jump in. You guys picked Orange Chalcedony. I'm just gonna put your stone over to the side here. And to start, we're going to be looking at what this wood dragon will be, like how you will respond to that energy, what it will bring up within you, what kind of impulses, sensation, how you kind of feel in the dragon year inside of yourself, how the dragon energy makes you feel inside of yourself. So we're gonna get a sigil oracle card first. I feel like this one wants Manipura. So interesting, Pile One had something similar. This is the solar plexus. So this is about willpower. This is about finding clarity, uh, finding your brilliance, finding, um, yeah, just your ability to kind of like make goals, move towards goals, find focus, hone instinct, shine, connect to joy. Um, but really being able to like get to it this year, get some things done for sure. All right, let's get some tarot cards to see. Ooh, what else is going on? New impulse. Ooh, you are feeling eager to start something new, to jump into something new. That's something you're longing for. That's something you want. Something you're feeling in yourself is to take a jump, to take a risk, to take a leap. And I feel like being connected to the Manipura, it's like a, that's positive energy because a lot of times with Fool, we can just sort of like baptism by fire. We can jump into things we know nothing about and are not prepared for, but the, the Manipura will make sure that we have a certain determination and willpower to to persevere, to keep going and learn as we go and stay focused and um, yeah, just thrive despite not really knowing what we're doing um, and just, yeah, being excited to be doing something new, I feel like. But I love this, like it feels very, like very sun energy, very enlightened energy too here. One, Ten of Pentacles, nice. And this deck does 
require some covering up for YouTube. Um, this one's probably too small that it wouldn't matter, but we'll just be safe. Okay. <laughs> wow, Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups. That's gorgeous. Okay. And then Three of Swords as well. Okay. So one sticky spot inside of you, but a lot of beautiful things too. So we've kind of gone over the Fool with Ten of Pentacles. This has a lot to do with um, really feeling a certain sense of movement of abundance in your life in the material realm which doesn't always have to be money it can be our sensuality our possessions and this ability to like as we feel things circulating in our lives the material realm circulating in our lives even within us um, the more we connect into that movement and share it with others, the more it enlivens us and gives us an even, even like deeper sense of gratitude through being able to share, which then just further enhances and grows that that material energy, whether it's sensuality, money, possessions, yeah, whatever it is, commerce. Um, so there's really beautiful energy on your side by jumping into something new, you may be jumping into something very lucrative too. And this is, um, you know, because this is indicating how you'll be feeling, you may have that impulse to also share this, share, share your sensations, share your affections, share what's giving you pleasure, share your money, share your resources, share your property and possessions, whatever it is that you're kind of that's circulating for you, you're going to feel very eager to share. I'm not sure if I need to cover that one, but I'll just be safe. And then the 10 of cups is this ability to really hold, um, certain like complex environment and really come in as like a conductor being able to compose and hold everything in this really fluid beautiful harmony and to me it indicates very masterful energy both of these do it's like masterful energy of like really understanding what the material realm means and very masterful energy of knowing what it means to hold space for things with a certain stillness and calmness and wiseness and how by doing that things sort of naturally come into their orbit and you just kind of have to hold space and then when you do that everything actually like naturally kind of falls into its harmony um, the one thing you may be feeling this year with the Three of Swords is some kind of disappointment um, in your heart. A lot of times it can be indicative of like a relationship issue, something that's hurting your heart relationally. Um, but I like to broaden that and I, because I've had Three of Swords come up plenty of times in readings where I've been disappointed by something that had nothing to do with a relationship. And I'm like, yeah, it's more just your heart. When your heart feels disappointed, um, something didn't work, something disappointed you, something didn't go well that your heart was was invested in and so you know a lot of times that can be in like a relationship but it doesn't have to be that but there's something here about needing to feeling a longing to like really heal some wound you may be coming into the year with um really coming into like a a sense of grace though the three of swords to me has a lot to do with like growing up and finding a sense of grace to be able to 
move on and integrate what has taken place so that so that because your heart can always find the courage to open itself again and having gone through things that are difficult that were disappointing your heart matures your heart becomes more wise more graceful more elegant and more mature but i think this year there's something you're healing that your heart has been disappointed in but by the time you come out of this dragon year i think it will be stronger and you will feel like a much more elegant sense of your heart a much more graceful mature beautiful grown-up sense of your heart is what i feel um, because so much is happening where you are sharing from the heart but it's a little bit more it feels a little bit more like community and not so personal um, but your heart is being very active and it's still having you leap towards things it's still having you engaged in in community and family and and whatnot but there's like a relational thing that you're you're healing but yeah you'll come into a much more grown-up heart in this by the end of the year okay let's pick from the wise animal body one card for how your body wants to speak to what's coming up for you through the dragon energy how does your body want to understand what's happening vocalize beautiful these colors to me really match I mean I think vocalize in general I think you know there is community stuff there are new things you're doing I think you need to you know be engaged speak you know express yourself what you're doing what you're interested in what's happening but because this is also because normally because of the way this woman is curled up in a ball it feels like she needs space and not to vocalize but because of the color matching here this does feel like um a call out to this card that you do maybe need to talk to to you know like a counselor or a good friend or a family member like talk through the things you're feeling I think it'll be really healing to kind of um, narratively go through what your heart is going through to somebody and have them reflect back to you that they're listening that they've heard you not necessarily advice but it's always nice to have someone mirror back to you that they've heard you because that means that they're holding space for what you shared and I think that's something that's really important in whatever you're healing about your heart and something more personal um, but yeah that the more community and potentially business and you know more community stuff more business stuff more out in the world stuff is like gorgeous this year um, yeah so and it's like talk about it Talk about all the things, wherever it feels safe for you to do so. Bring it up, <laughs> circulate the energy of what, what you're doing, express things about it. Um, oh, I've already this one already popped over, but uh, before I could explain what we're doing. So now we're gonna go down to this lower part of the frame to see what um, the dragon year in terms of like circumstances, events, things outside of you that may come into your sphere because of this dragon energy. Like what is the dragon energy stirring up external to you that you don't necessarily have control of that is coming towards you because of dragon energy. So we've got wisdom, very interesting. Um, we're also going to pick an animal card to accompany this to get a full understanding of the main theme here heart medicine let go of that which um, which does not serve your highest good oh this feels very I mean it definitely feels connected to the three of swords like potentially letting go of something 
in order for your heart to find its medicine and its wisdom. Um, but also like leaping into something new may be meaning you're leaving certain things as well that weren't serving your highest good. And that is the wise thing to do um, because we see so much beauty coming of that. Um, so to me, what this is saying, how I would interpret this is the dragon, the wood dragon is bringing circumstances into your life that are like the platform. They're creating platforms for you to leap, to heal, to move things, to really enliven, heal, awaken, refresh your heart. It's bringing heart medicine to you, which by bringing heart medicine to you, you start to understand the wisdom that your heart has. So it's sort of like external things that are coming or helping you to, yeah, to really understand your heart in a beautiful way. Um, you know, and I think you're, you're feeling jazzed up to get into it too. Like even with this three of swords, because Manipura is like, you know, your main energy, it's like you're eager to just get into the heart medicine to do it. Like, yeah, heal things, move things, awaken things. Um, and yeah, the environment are bringing things to help you see the wisdom of your heart. Okay, let's get a few tarot cards. Six of Wands, beautiful. Um, things going on external to you or kind of being brought into your world or like certain things may come into your sphere that you are just like really naturally um, capable of shining in is like it's like the universe is opening doors for you in which you naturally just know how to shine in them and so you have victories you have successes um, so yeah it's bringing in success and victory this year and I think that your environment, like the dragon, wants you to experience successes so you even further understand the wisdom of your heart and further heal, find some heart medicine. So victory coming in. Page of Pentacles. New self-worth. A whole new way of valuing yourself. It could be a new income coming towards you, new, it could be new information that comes towards you or new learning that you come into that helps you to understand your worth better, but something external to you is, is coming in to, to unlock some understanding of, of how you need to be valuing yourself and what is what you should be valuing about yourself and awakening new kind of, you know, things may happen that awaken new values in you. Um, but it will really kind of energize you too. Ace of Wands. This card has come up in every reading so far. Which, you know, it doesn't surprise me. It is kind of a very dragon card so this is bringing you some new opportunities for some it could be like a new job for others a creative project could come your way for others it could be a new love like love interest but new passion coming you know certain circumstances coming in that are connecting to your passion, new passion, connecting to the power of your creativity. And then we've got eight of swords as well. Um, and that also came out in one of the other piles. In this reading, it feels different in this reading though. Um, 
In this reading, it feels like I'm noticing the eye on the sword, which I did not notice in the first reading. Um, Jupiter, I. Um, what is going on? I need another card. I need a confirmation more on this, please. What does this mean? Nine of swords. <laughs> anxiety. Um, well, this is, there's so much beautiful stuff going on. At the same time, because you have all of these impulses to do new things, a lot of, it feels busy. The Ten of Pentacles and Ten of Cups feels busy and complex, even though it's beautiful. You have mastery to hold it. It's like a lot of movement, a lot of things, a lot of people. And so there may be times when because this is your inner impulses and longings, but I think you get yourself into environments where sometimes it's like you get flooded. I think sometimes you overdo it and um, there are gonna be moments when you're having to attend to like events or activities or projects or to-do list things, tasks where you're just kind of like um, mentally hitting a wall. So it is a high octane year. And so it's like, take care of your mental health. Try to find some downtime, even though your impulses are really pulling you forward and external and active in life. Try to find a little bit of downtime because some of the result is like your external life is responding to that by putting maybe too many things on your plate to fill. Not that energetically you can't do it, but like mentally it's gonna be a lot. And so if you just find a little restraint cultivate some downtime, you will curb some, of, this feels like a warning to me, you could curb this, having this information going into the year of like, don't overdo it, don't put yourself into everything. Um, because the external world is being very responsive to that and you may have too many events, things, tasks, to mentally engage with and it's like a lot it's too much pressure on your mind <laughs> they think the amount of things in the external world you have to then respond to but if you have heed this warning take care of your mind don't say yes to everything <laughs> um you know find a little bit of restraint in your schedule um find some balance if you can do that, even though it's a year to really engage and take advantage of things, just whatever you can do to take care of your mental health, I think will, will go a long way this year um, because there's going to be maybe more than your your mind realizes it wanted to, to engage with the response to your assertive energy this year. Okay, let's get a crystal card for some advice about this external year. But this is just one aspect. These other cards are so beautiful. Successes, new revitalizing of, of value, new things. It's, you know, and just also this healing taking place. Okay, and what does the crystal realm want to give you some advice about on this external aspect of the year? Be kind to yourself. Yeah, and I think that means like you don't have to say yes to everything. You, um, if you're overwhelmed, you can take care of yourself. If you, you know, you may be dieting into some things you don't know much about, and so you could make some mistakes, and it's like, it's fine, you're a beginner. That's great. Mistakes are great because then you learn how to more and more hone in on what you're doing and where you're going and how to do things 
mistakes are beautiful they are learning opportunities and it's just like be kind to yourself and whatever this three of swords means to you some sort of you know heart healing that's more personal going on I think that's saying that like how the external world is responding to you is trying to get you to come out of your shell and it's like but be gentle with it you know don't force it you know put you know start to push yourself a little bit to you know vocalize to someone about it and to open your heart again but be gentle with it be kind to yourself in that process so yeah it's beautiful beautiful softening advice coming in from the crystal realm because there is a lot of assertive active charging in energy but it's like but there are some tender things going on and you are putting a lot on your plate and you are getting in over your head in some aspects um, in a beautiful great way but like you know there are some things that that could you know be a little bit bumpy um despite all the beauty and magic and fun but so like be kind to yourself in those little little bumps you know it's not these i don't see big bumps but like as you hit some some uh gravelly terrain it's like just yeah be gentle about it it's fine everyone everyone does everyone hits their their moments so just just you know sometimes turn off that high octane octane and and ground yourself and care for yourself when you need it yeah okay to end we are going to get three tea leaves just for some whoops little things coming in um more specific things so we've got May. May is an important month for whatever reason. <laughs> got hat, you will be playing a different role. So yeah, maybe with that Ace of Wands, a different job or something in that new leap. Maybe you're starting something new. Oh, I don't know what happened here. Part of these cards are, there's too many of them to take. So I just need to fix this and then we'll get a new card for you. Okay. Um, ugh, there's still one turned over or a few. Maybe this is your card then. Oh, romance is in the air. So maybe that three of swords and the vocalizes like you need to, and heart medicine is coming in and wisdom. It's like, it's time to kind of come out of that, um, to talk about it with someone so you can re-engage your heart. Um, Reop you know your heart's reopening this year and I, you know that um, page of pentacles feels like that too so I do feel like you're coming into the year with that heart disappointment that more personal heart um, thing but this year is getting you to reopen it and something beautiful because you your heart has grown up in terms of those personal things whatever it was wounded about is is more mature and more elegant and graceful now and it's it's blossoming in a way it never has that's so beautiful yeah i'm curious about may what this has to do with um why may is important and what do we need to do about that should we do a tarot let's do another tea leaf that's what i already have in my hands is a month in the year <laughs> that doesn't help me and August and how we need two tea leaves well one because I think whatever happens in May then like something more happens in August like a continuation in August <laughs> what what is it oh we got two came up pig beware of greed frying pan trouble accusation Beware of greed, trouble, and accusation. And that looks like a pork chop frying. <laughs> this is a pig and that's like a pork chop frying. Um, hmm. What does this have to do with? Is it you or others or both? Beware of greed of others. Beware of your own greed. 
Um, uh, let's roll a, I'm gonna roll a house of the zodiac dice. I will show if it's more personal or social or external to you. Nine. Okay, that makes sense. Um, the greed <laughs> is, uh, it makes sense for like the anxiety that came through and the fool as well. Your eyes are, with whatever you're taking a risk and a leap into, it is great. You will have determination, you will have some willpower, but this is warning not to to get in over your head. Um, you may be seeing a big vision that is is not attainable. And it's not saying you can't expand your life and broaden your life and grow your life and forge into new territory. It's just like find some realism though. Don't get you need to come from your heart. Um, not from like what you could gain. Um, connect to that Ten of Pentacles where it's like there's this gratitude. Um, that's how you grow things is continuing to circulate by feeling gratitude for what is and what is going on currently and what you do have instead of like trying to that greed feels like coming from a place of scarcity and lack. So this is, this is some advice, like if you can, can connect to in this new thing you're jumping into, if you can connect to always feeling gratitude for where you are and what you currently have, things will organically grow and move to, to that growth you're hoping for. But if you're not connected to gratitude and you're coming from scarcity, you'll invite some trouble. You'll get in over your head and it will invite some trouble. So this is um, a, a warning to heed too, but some like beautiful advice and very easy to follow advice. Just don't, you know, try to push your boundaries and, and expand your life through this sense of, of scarcity. Grow it through what you currently feel grateful for and sharing what you have. And that will just naturally more organically expand life so that's what that feels like okay this is where we are going to end that was an unexpected whole little reading in itself but we figured it out so if this resonated um, i always appreciate support with likes and shares and subscribes always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments as well and um just to let you know as well down in the descriptions if you are interested in Western astrology. I do have a monthly newsletter that's free that I send out through Substack that gives sort of my my interpretation of the astrology of the month. For those that subscribe as paid subscribers throughout the month, I also send sort of by sign horoscopes um, for different transits that take place so little horoscopes for each of those come out as they happen um, but the free you know the free monthly one is great too so in the description there will be a, uh, a link to subscribe to that free or paid substack or newsletter if you want and as well under that I'll put a link to the most current one which is Feb um, the, you know if you come to this in February when I put this out, it'll be for the February newsletter, which I will have already sent when this comes out. So um, yeah, check that out if you like astrology and hope to see you guys there. Wishing you a really beautiful dragon year. It feels like an exciting one for you guys. A lot of growth, a lot of excitement, a lot of, yeah, just energy and also heart healing and winds and yeah, gorgeous. So uh, yeah, have a beautiful year and I will see you in future readings. Hello, Pile 4. Welcome to your Year of the Wood Dragon reading. You guys picked this beautiful cherry quartz, which I'm just going to put over to the side 
Okay, so to start, we are going to, in this top row, top part of the frame, we are going to look at a little bit about your inner world during the year of the dragon. So the year of the dragon energy, how that will mingle with your own energy and what kind of new impulses and energy you'll feel due to this dragon energy um, in the atmosphere. And one thing before I jump into the cards, I realized um, after I had finished the intro to the reading that I'm pretty sure I forgot to talk about the dates for the year of the dragon. So most people think that the new Chinese animal begins on Lunar New Year, um, which Lunar New Year, Chinese Lunar year, New Year is always the second new moon after winter solstice. But the Chinese astrology actually uses a solar calendar and the new animal takes over most years on February 4th. Sometimes it's the third or fifth, um, but it is the fourth this year, which is what it typically is. So this reading will be coming out, I think, February 5th. And so when you see this reading, whenever you come to it, we will have already jumped into the dragon year. Okay, let's get a look into internal how will the dragon year affect your energy your impulses your yeah just whatever's going on inside you and how you're feeling core beautiful and i love um the illustration with this it's like a lot of cores kind of mingling it just feels like wheels turning you being connected to what is core about you, to your core, so your strength, and really getting balls in motion, wheels turning, life moving forward. Is that, that's kind of the, the feeling I get with, with the energy that this dragon is conjuring in you is to get things moving. Okay, let's do some tarot cards to get a little deeper into that. not coming out here's one six of swords okay balance divine feminine High Priestess, beautiful, gorgeous energy. Okay, so this definitely feels like with the Six of Swords coming out first in terms of the tarot cards, as you jump into this year, you may be feeling this motivation to um, leave something that's feeling tumultuous, leave something that's feeling like something that you feel like you've grown out of, but also that feels a little bit like it's just been rocky. And there's, there's something that your energy is identifying that you, you are directing yourself towards that feels like better, calmer, more beautiful shores. So you're kind of moving on and toward, not just moving on with nothing to go to, but there's something you're going toward um, that feels like calmer shores. So that's in itself really beautiful. And these three cards feel like what it is you're moving toward, at least how it will feel to you. Uh, um, in terms of getting to this new shore or the process of getting there at least is a restored sense of balance coming in um, in traditional tarot this card is justice 
And we do see the feathers of Ma'at here, which is a little bit more of like cosmic or divine justice. And then with the snakes that I always think of kind of like a rebirth too. So it's like something, because we don't really see typical skills like we would see on the justice card, we see the feathers. It's like your heart has lightened up. That's how you will feel um, inside of you. Like your heart is lightened up, balance is restored, and a new sense of like a, re, a revival of energy, a rebirth of energy coming in. And you feeling very connected to your kind of like your soul calling, your soul messages, your inner values, the things that make you feel good just to you, not because of what everyone else is doing, but like because you're connected to your own values, your own five senses, your own sense of pleasure, your own um, particular creativity. It's like you're just feeling very connected to yourself in the physical realm and in the intuitive realm. So this balance coming in is just like, it's like ultimate, like you're just really connected to yourself. This moving on is such a good thing and that, that makes sense why this image has sort of like balls in motion, wheels turning. It's like, you're just feeling good. Is new balance, deeply connected to yourself really knowing what feels good to you in your body and what feels good to you intuitively in terms of um, just trusting your intuition in general, your inner knowings, um, really being in your center. Yeah, you are in your center. This dragon energy is really bringing you into yourself and I think it feels really good. Lovely, that's gorgeous to see. Okay, let's see what the wise body animal has to say about this in terms of what your body wants to say to all of this, what your body wants to communicate to you. Deep breath. And so in this deep breath, it has an instruction to do like an in-breath of a count to four and an out-breath, which is a count to six. A lot of, there's several breathing cards in this deck that are a little bit more even intense where you like breathe for a certain amount in and then you hold it and then you breathe out or there's ones where you like, you know, um, tighten and loose and they feel like a little bit more like stress related. This one feels a little bit more calm of just like relaxing. It's not like you're trying to decompress from a stress. It's just like, yeah, I'm just in me. Like I'm going to take a deep breath in and a little longer breath out to relax into myself, but I don't need to like do any more than that because there's not like this incredible stress. I'm just, just taking a breath a deep breath to get into my center. And so that that tells me a lot about how this year feels. Like you're just in a slightly deeper exhale than inhale this year. A slightly different like a slightly deeper relax than activation. But there's still, you know, it's still somewhat balanced. You're still active, but in like a little bit more comfortable, relaxed, peaceful way this year. That's what it feels like. This feel, this year feels like a nice deep breath in your body, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, but there is, you know, this core, it does feel like wheels are turning, things are moving, but just, just in your center in like a calm, nice way. Yeah. It's really great. Okay. We are going to now look at what the external world may bring your way with this dragon energy. So how will the dragon energy turn life up to bring certain events and circumstances and yeah, things not necessarily in your control, like what's coming towards you because of the dragon years energy. Purification. 
And I know in this book, the purification has a lot to do with like a summer rain. So it's not this deep. There's certain seasons where rain may be involved where it feels like more intense, like a deep healing or a deep um, release or something like that. But because this is connected to like a sunflower and a summer rain, it's more of like a freshening up. Um, a re-enlivening kind of feel channel that sense of like what in summer just after it's rain if you're near or in nature the smell of that it's just so fragrant and so alive and so fresh and that's what this feels like your environment coming toward the environment coming towards you has that feel of just things are refreshed yeah really beautiful which feels like it's kind of matching you know and i've seen that in every pile and it makes sense that our external world somewhat steps up to match our internal um, but this definitely kind of has that sense of like it's just your external world the external dragon versus your internal dragon is responding to your deep breath with with a fresh a fresh sense of life in in fruitful beautiful energy and then you've also connected with us to have elephant grounding ground your energies and emotions deep into the earth yeah so the environment coming in is refreshed but also very stable very like you'll you'll you're going to feel like it's easy to have um, your feet on the ground this year and some security under you and because of that feeling safe feeling nourished feeling refreshed by life yeah really gorgeous okay let's get some tarot cards for this Ooh, two just shot out so we've got queen of wands i love this and hermit interesting Queen of Wands and Hermit. That feels like um, really going into your cell. Like, um, okay, this is external energy though. Things coming towards you. So events, atmosphere, environment, circumstances, people coming towards you. Um, these are going to be things that... I feel like what's coming towards you are, are bringing these out of you or things that want to bring these aspects of yourself to the forefront. So your environment is wanting to bring your creative command to the forefront, your inspiring sense of leadership to the forefront, um, your creative passion to the forefront, as well as your deep instincts, things that you've really worked hard on that are very personal where you've through practice really developed like a personal instinct in something that's all your own your own beat your own rhythm things coming towards you this year are really going to pull that out of you showcase this about you and i actually feel like this queen of wands showcasing like like environments circumstances coming to to ignite your queen of wands energy in order to showcase what it is you've worked really hard on. So I don't see you, your environment making you a hermit. I see your environment wanting you to showcase the things you've already been a hermit in, that you've already gone into a lot of deep personal practice and instinctual work and rhythm in and the yeah things coming towards you this year are wanting you to, to show this to the world, show, show what it is your instincts and rhythms are that are very unique and, and personal to you, sovereign to you. This one wanted to come out. 10 of wands. So you may be holding a lot of responsibility as well this year. Let's get one more to give context to what that is. Four of Swords. So a lot of contemplation. 
Um, but that feels balanced to me. To match that inner balance you're feeling, it's like there are maybe a lot of, um, you're kind of like stepping up to the plate, holding some responsibility this year that may feel like a lot, but you're also being given the space to have equal measure of ability to kind of like contemplate and um, make correct decisions and find harmonies in and um, find where those balance points are, find where the bridges are in things, find where the, the balanced ways forward are. So even though you're holding a lot, you're being given sort of the space to mentally process what that is, what you're holding. It's a lot, but you're, given the sp you're being given the space to hold and mentally process all that you are required to hold. So it's a nice balance, and I think you have the energy. This doesn't feel hard to me. It doesn't feel, it feels like you're up for the challenge. And it is a challenge, it is a lot, it's holding responsibility, but you've got, you've got fire in you, you've got skills and instincts in you, you've got your feet on the ground, you're refreshed, and you're given the space and, and some, you know, um, mental fortitude to be able to process, contemplate, um, find the harmonies to, yeah, hold and, and deal with what you're holding. So it's not, it's nothing that scares me, but yeah, but do be ready for holding some responsibilities this year, like shouldering a lot could be work it could be home it could be other school who knows but but you're up for it you're up for the challenge and it will really one it's not in this deck but there is um oh, this one needs to be covered a little it's probably too far away to matter but um there is a different tarot deck where the interpretation of the ten of wands talks about um that weight we're holding. So the 10 is always like coming to the finish line and almost at a threshold of like changing paradigms. Um, and with wands, it's like creativity, it's journey. This is a Sagittarian card. So it's like the end of a journey and you're near the finish line and there's still just like, there's so much you're, holding and it's just like the last steps and you're like can I make it I only have a few steps but like oh my gosh um but there's another deck where the interpretation is like the person is holding this huge planet and it was sort of like you're strong enough to hold your purpose and something about that's coming through I don't know why I thought of that for this card maybe it's because of the other stuff that's going on but I I feel that here. It's like you're willing to hold and shoulder a lot because it's very connected to you holding your purpose. So if your environment and things coming towards you are really bringing you into responsibility for things that are very connected to your purpose, which is really, I mean, I feel like Many of us often are, you know, have these feelings of like, am I really doing something purposeful or what is my purpose? And this year, I, I think that's why you're willing to shoulder whatever this Ten of Wands is, is like it is connected to your pur purpose. So you're energized, you're willing to, you know, spend the time to contemplate and really harmonize things. And you've worked hard at this already. You have instincts. You have a personal rhythm with whatever this is already. So yeah, really, really cool. Really beautiful reading. Um, we're going to get a um, message from the crystal realm. Some guidance for holding this. I have to say your pile has been so far like really <laughs> not that the other piles were complicated necessarily but like there were in each pile little things where I was like trying to figure out what was trying to be said by the cards um piece things together nothing too complicated but 
But this reading, I've not had any point where I've been like, what is this? You know, I need to fill into this for a second. It was just like, like everything was very clear to me. So it does make me feel like you guys are very balanced and very clear this year. Okay, message from the crystal realm for you guys. Release your emotional baggage. This feels like that feels very connected to the elephant and purification. I think what this feels like to me is whatever your environment is bringing to you this year will feel like um, is like, what am I trying to say? I feel like you've already done some work on like releasing emotional baggage. Like you left rocky shores and you are partially in process of going to the calmer new shore and then partially there. Um, you know, I, I think start of the year, you're maybe going there and then at some point of the year you land on the new shore. And that in itself was like releasing the baggage and that summer rain is like um, a symbol from spirit. It's like mirroring how that feels to you. And it is like a releasing of emotional baggage. And so that's what this year feels like, like you've released some emotional baggage and things feel fresh, things feel more grounded. So yeah, it's, uh, pay attention to that though. Like whatever baggage, especially emotionally, you feel releasing off of you, pay attention to that, acknowledge it, honor that, be proud of, of yourself for releasing baggage and, and take some nice deep breaths. I almost forgot this card was here and I took this deep breath, like take some deep breaths to be like, wow, what a difference this year feels like is what it feels like to me. Like really, really beautiful energy there. Okay, to end, we are gonna get three tea leaf cards, just some more kind of straightforward little fortunes to be aware of for the dragon energy. So we've got caterpillar things will not already will not always be this way a change is coming um i think this is interesting so i rewatched my rabbit year which was last year's forecast and one of the piles had this and it felt like that's what that pile was kind of going through it was like that feeling of that year was like every not everything will always be this way change is coming and so I I, I feel that um, thread continuing here where it's like that that sense of things won't always be this way was last year this year the change is coming is here so you're kind of already kind of as you enter dragon year you're already through things will not always be this way and and already starting to feel the change coming in yeah which mirrors that you know the that purification the release finding your core your center your purpose moving to calmer shores That's too many. Um, okay, we'll take, there's three there, but we'll take all three. Okay, oh, shoot, there's four. Oh, well, I already said we're taking them. So you have a lot of little fortune spear. Heartache over what you no longer have. So that could be the six of, six of swords. That could be the... The pat, you know, emotional baggage you're releasing is over something heartache over what you no longer have, but I think you're starting to recognize that thing you no longer have is the thing that was tipping you off balance, and so even if there's some heartache around whatever that is, it's like the dragon was wanting you to reconnect to to your core, your center, and your purpose, and to recognize through what it's bringing into you and your environment that um, 
releasing that heartache or whatever it is you feel like you no longer have has been like the best thing that could have happened. And then weeping willow, family sorrow. So that could be connected to whatever the bumpy stuff was. Beetle good fortune. And that's the change, a change is coming. I feel like these are connected. The th not Things will not always be this way. Family sorrow, heartache. These are all what you're coming from. Good fortune is what you are, what the change is that's coming this year. And I feel like it's not like all, year. I think you're like, coming into that good fortune as we enter the year. An egg, success assured with good plans and hard work. And that's this, that four of swords and 10 of, of wands, hard work, good plans, um, and success. Good fortune and success, this is waiting for you. So coming into the year, you're in, a change is coming. That's the leaving the rocky shores, you're leaving this. And this is what you're coming into more and more and more as we go into the year. Beautiful, gorgeous reading, you guys. Very excited for you. I feel like the rabbit year was maybe a, a stalled one, a one that felt like, will things always be this way? A little bit stuck, a little bit sorrowful, a little bit weepy, <laughs> um, heartachey, weepy, or just rocky something you know whatever just a little it feels like a little stuck to me and this year is just fresh air grounded centered calm ah deep breath that's what it feels like beautiful all right this is where i'm going to leave you guys if this resonated i always appreciate the things that are supportive such as likes and shares always grateful for kind and thoughtful comments as well also, if you are interested in Western astrology, um, I do put out a monthly sort of forecast of the astrological stuff for the month um, through, I have a sub stack, which is kind of like a newsletter. And so there's a link in my description if you would like to join that and get my astrological forecast for the months. Um, there's a paid option also that you get by sign horoscopes throughout the month for any kind of big transit changes that take place. So say Mercury changes a sign, you'll get a by sign email for a little horoscope for that, or we change to a new season or, you know, like things like that or a new and full moon things as well. Um, but the, the free one has plenty of beautiful stuff too. So at least check that out if you like astrology. So down in the descriptions, there will be a link to subscribe to my Substack. Um, and then underneath, I'm also going to put a link to the latest monthly, free monthly, um, uh, forecast for February, because when I put this reading out, we will already be into February and that one will have already gone out. So I'll put a link to that if you're interested as well. All right, have a beautiful green wood dragon year. I feel this is going to be just, yeah, that breath of fresh air, gorgeous for you guys. All right, see you guys later. Hope to see you in future readings as well. Okay, we are gonna do just a really, really quick run through of each of the animals in the Chinese zodiac. Um, I think they're going to be quick enough that I'm not even going to do timestamps for them. And I will go in order that they typically go in. So if you don't know your where your animal falls, you may have to listen to it all. But if you kind of know you're near the front of the pack or the back of the pack, you could fast, you know, do that quick little tap to fast forward a little if you know you're near the end. Um, I will, maybe I'll just run them off real quick so you, if you don't know the order, you can kind of target, like gauge where you're at. So rat is the first one, ox, tiger, um, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, rooster, Oh, did I forget one? Rooster. 
dog, pig. Hopefully I didn't forget any of them. I think that's 12. Um, anyway, so that might help you to gauge, you know, if you're near the end, then you might just tap a little to fast forward because these are going to be just a very quick little something for each zodiac, um, Chinese zodiac animal. Um, okay, so let's dive in with rat. I'm going to get a priestess of light and a feather message for you guys for your dragon year. Woo! Well, let's take this top this top one and it says sacred breath and sound life force and communication um yeah so that feels like um energy with life force and communication so maybe a lot of busyness and movement this year a lot of communication movement energy and then your feather message you got two. I guess we'll just take them. Peacock. Inherent wisdom is emerging at this time. Watch it and ready yourself for a rebirth. And Bluebird, you are being gifted with blessings of happiness and peace. Okay, beautiful. So that's Rat. Next up, we've got Ox. Okay, Ox, let's get your Priestess of Light. That one. Innovation, new creations. Ooh, that's fun. So feeling energized about potentials of the future, seeing into your future, shaking things up, feeling kind of um, like awakenings sort of coming as well. And Falcon, use your keen perception and skill in making decisions. Do not delay. And I kind of feel like she's sort of like holding two things too. So maybe there will be an important decision this year. Trust your intuition because it says don't delay. So don't miss out on something by not making a decision about something big this year. Okay, after Ox, we come to Tiger. Tiger, let's get your Priestess of Light. And this one wanted to come out. Death and Rebirth, Darkness to Light. All right. So transformation, maybe the end of a cycle of something in your life and the beginning of the new cycle taking place. See, that one wanted to come out and flicker. New rhythms are coming into your life now. You are encouraged to trust and adapt. So your day-to-day -day may really drastically change this year, go through a transformation, which could mean like a change in your job or a change in where you live, but something's happening where your day-to-day -day is going to feel very different, go through a transformation. Okay, that was Tiger. So next we go to Rabbit. Okay, Rabbit, let's get your Priestess of Light. River of Blessings, Release Constraints. Ooh, that's nice to hear, kind of um, breaking out of anything you're feeling caged into or held back by, liberating yourself. That's great. And let's get your feather message. Finch, new opportunities and choices are opening up to you now. Claim them. So new things that come in for you may be the thing that help you see where you are limiting yourself or boxing yourself in and it kind of, yeah, some kind of new choice or opening helps you to jailbreak and see life in bigger terms, bigger and better terms. Okay, Dragon, you are next. This is your year as well. Sometimes when the Chinese year matches our own Chinese animal, it can add a little extra pressure onto us. But you guys are mag magical, energetic creatures, so I think you'll handle it fine. Bright heart light, open connections. So being like coming from your heart and connecting with others, trying to be very positive with others, heartfelt with others, um, warm towards others, something about that will help, I think, your growth and natural magic this year. 
and white owl, the wisdom and messages of the divine are within you. Yeah, so open up to like downloads, um, guidance from from your spirit beings, spirit guides, um, your own intuition as well. Definitely your own intuition for sure, because divine messages of the divine are within you. So that feels like third eye, inner knowings, intuition, trust yourself and trust your heart and be warm and open with others. Okay, after dragon, we go to um, snake. Okay, and you guys have clairvoyance, inspiration, interpretation, and trust. Ooh, so really um, a spiritual vibe within you guys. I think, you know, you guys are tend to be close to the ground, so really instinctual and something about that this year is is giving you certain inspiration and certain um, visions um, that you should trust and like trust yourself and what you see and you guys have owl your intuition is correct follow your inner wisdom without fate without fail yeah yeah so so inspiration and visions that come to you trust those um, they may be steering you in interesting places um, okay, after snake we have horse. Your priestess of light is shamanic journey, purpose, attunement, vision quest. And I get the feel of like literally going on a journey this year if that's like starting into a new path or big foreign travel. Um, certain things, certain things that just feel like you're pushed into a new trajectory that are exposing you to new things that really push you to to see yourself in new ways and attune to life in new ways and really discover new kinds of purposes within you um yeah and then you guys have osprey your success is now at hand allow the abundance to flow to you effortlessly. So if you've already been, you know, if you're in the midst of what feels like a big journey, maybe that success is around the corner this year. It would, to me, if you're, if that resonates, you're already on a journey, it would probably be something that's been years in the making and you're reaching some kind of success. Um, or for if that doesn't resonate, it's sort of some kind of new journey you're pushed into this year and like successfully really attuning to yourself and life and the world in new ways and finding kind of new interesting purpose. Okay, after the horse, we've got the sheep. Let's get your priestess of light. wanted to come out deep emotions unknown feelings past life influences um, so really getting into your psyche this year and your unconscious you may I know a couple of the piles were do you know deep into some shadow work so that may have been a pile that you guys were drawn to but I feel like your seeing side aspects of your personality you haven't been aware of and really getting a hold of that and integrating it and creating new kind of patterns due to awareness that you have and sort of letting go of feelings and emotions and baggage that have come up due to uh, ways that aspect of your personality have been functioning because you haven't seen them and so it's a positive thing you're seeing a pattern and so you're releasing all of the baggage that came with that pattern and integrating that aspect of yourself with awareness of creating new patterns eagle you are learning all aspects of, of spiritual connection and reaching new heights and i feel like that is like being able to see some aspect of yourself from above from like your higher self um and so able to really be like, oh, okay, I get that pattern. I get what that pattern's about. It's like a breakthrough. Beautiful. Okay, after sheepies, we have um, monkey. I think that was the, I, knew, I feel like I forgot one of the animals when I listed them in the intro, and I think it was monkey. 
Okay, monkey, let's see what you guys have going for you in dragon year. General kind of vibe going on. Uh, this one I'm feeling. Healing the heart, power of self-love. Oh, that's beautiful. And that just totally reminds me of like the breakthrough point in heroine's journey stories. So um, an example would be in Beauty and the Beast when she realizes she loves the beast and then he turns into the prince and all of those objects like the teacup and the clock all turn into people. That's a metaphor for her actually starting to love herself and because then she can come into and through her heart, she actually sees what's really there and not sort of projections of, of not love because of not loving self. So like coming into a new self-love which then allows you to see the reality of the beauty of everything and everyone around you in a deeper, more powerful way. So Cardinal, stand tall and proud. See the leadership role unfolding ahead of you. And I do think, you know, leadership also, like a really positive form of leadership does come from the heart. And so when you're coming from self-love and like a really loving heart, you really come into your leadership. So big year for you guys, monkeys. Okay, um, after monkey, we have rooster. Rooster, you guys have sacred purpose, eternal flame, ancestral legacy. So something in your family lineage, whether it's um, the family you were born into or some kind of soul family, it's like you're being plugged into that longer purpose that a lineage kind of incarnates for something about that is coming into you like a calling that's deeper than just you that's connected to lineage um, coming in for you and it will make you feel a new flame come to life in you and crow universal laws and truths are now being revealed use this energy to create your reality Wow, that feels very kind of deep for you guys. New reality, sacred purpose, connecting to that purpose that's like, you know, part of some kind of lineage. Yeah. Okay, after rooster, we have dog. So dog, this is your priestess of light for dragon year. Oh, here's flew across the table. <laughs> Earth magic, fearlessness, removing obstacles. Again, there was another sign that had a horse, but the horse to me is just jumping out today of like movement, traction, power. Um, yeah, anything you've felt has been in your way of like progress or moving life or that's just, yeah, obstructed you from things or made you feel feel trapped like you're you're overcoming that this year you're tapping into the magic both of horse and dragon and feeling some fearlessness to kind of jailbreak and move and tap your power and then white swan the power of divine grace is within you and i just think of that horse looks very graceful in movement too so even like grace in movement grace and fearlessness so it's not this wild um, that fearlessness is like um, uh, coming from a, a wise place, not an impulsive place. It's like, yeah, it's it's inherent. It's it's something that's developed in you. Yeah, very cool. Okay, after dog, we have pig, and I believe that's our last one. So pig, ooh, you have two priestesses of light. Duality, many meanings, misunderstanding, as well as telepathy, transmission, perception, communication. Very interesting. Um, 
I think you're seeing things this year in very dynamic uh, ways, really able to see into paradox, into polarity, really understanding things in dimensional ways, which is hard for a lot of people to grasp or tap into. So kind of that that genius overlay that's that's entered your energy this year may be hard for others. I don't see it as like misunderstanding, like miscommunications. I, I feel it as like people being like, wow, you're on a different wavelength. You're kind of like your mind's really firing this year and I can't keep up kind of thing. Like, I don't understand what you're talking about. It's too hard, like too far above me. And then telepathy, I think will help with communication. It will help you to um, tap into other people's minds to be able to meet them where they are and give the meanings needed um, for where people are. So really, really brilliant mental energy coming into you guys this year. And then you have ostrich. The choice is clear for you now. Follow the wisdom and truth you feel in your heart. So also making some potential big decision this year that you probably already know uh, what that is, or if that hasn't come in yet, it's like you'll you'll know in your heart, but it might still be a decision that's sort of big, you know, and not necessarily like it might be a hard decision for some it might not necessarily be like a a tense decision for others it might be more of like a, just a big decision so for some it might be a tense decision and for others just a big decision but something important about a decision this year too okay that is it happy dragon year everybody